People of God, welcome home. You're, you're fabulous. Let's stand for the confession. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light, and our salvation. Let us come into the light, the revealing and healing light of God. God of grace and glory, you have brought us through the night of sin into the light of Jesus' resurrection. Yet our lives are still shadowed by sin. Make us alive in Christ, O God. Make us new as you make all things new. Rescue us from evil and the gloom of sin. Renew us in grace and restore us to living in your holiness. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Rejoice with all creation around God's throne. The light of the risen Christ puts to flight all evil deeds, washes away sin, restores innocence to the fallen, casts out hate, brings peace, and humbles earthly pride. Jesus Christ loves you and frees you from your sin by his blood. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Yeah. Me? Okay. I'll do it. Okay. Oh, you're doing the carry. Yeah. You're yeah, I'll do the
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of his Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Throughout the world, for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord have mercy. For your people here who have come to give you praise. For the strength to live your word, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord have mercy. Help, save and defend us, O God. with you. Let us pray. Eternal and all merciful God, with all the angels and all the saints, we laud your majesty and might. By the resurrection of your Son, show yourself to us and inspire us to follow Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The first reading is from Acts chapter 9, beginning with verse 1. Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples in the Lord, of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus, so that if he found any who belonged to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now as he was going along and approaching Damascus, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. 
he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He asked, Who are you, Lord? The reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But get up and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless, because they heard the voice but saw no one. Saul got up from the ground, and though his eyes were open, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. For three days he was without sight and neither ate nor drank. Now there was a disciple in Damascus named Ananias. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias, he answered, Here I am, Lord. The Lord said to him, Get up and go to the street called Straight, and at the house of Judas, look for a man of Tarsus named Saul. At this moment he is praying, and he has seen in a vision a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him so that that he might regain his sight. But Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much evil he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priests to bind all who invoke your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is an instrument whom I have chosen to bring my name before Gentiles and kings and before the people of Israel. I myself will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. So Ananias went and entered the house. He laid his hands on Saul and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on your way here has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately something like scales fell from his eyes and his sight was restored. Then he got up and was baptized. And after taking some food, he regained his strength. For several days he was with the disciples in Damascus. And immediately he began to proclaim Jesus in the synagogues, saying, He is the Son of God, Word of God. I will exalt you, O Lord, because you have lifted me up. And have not let my enemies triumph over me. You brought me up, O Lord, from the dead. You restored my life as I was going down to the grave. Sing praise to the Lord, all you faithful. Give thanks in holy remembrance. God's wrath is short. God's favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping spends the night, but joy comes in the morning. Your favor made me as strong as the mountains. Then you hid your face, and I was filled with fear. What profit is there in my blood if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you or declare your faithfulness? You 
have turned my wailing into dancing. You have put off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. The second reading is from the fifth chapter of Revelation, beginning with the eleventh verse. Then I looked, and I heard the voice of many angels surrounding the throne, and the living creatures and the elders. They numbered myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands, singing with full voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slaughtered to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor, and glory, and blessing. Then I heard every creature in heaven, and on earth, and under the earth, and in the sea, and all that is in them singing, to the one seated on the throne, and to the Lamb, be blessing, and honor, and glory, and might, forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshiped. Word of God. Gospel according to St. John, the 21st chapter. Please be seated. I'm uh, taking the liberty of uh, reading today's gospel from the uh, Common English Bible, a uh, a newer translation. uh, Come out about five years ago, and if you are one of those persons who always must read along, you're going to be a little uh, discombobulated. Uh, So maybe, as has been done in uh, 1900 or so years of church history, you might simply hear the reading. Later, Jesus himself appeared again to his disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. This is how it happened. Simon Peter Thomas, called Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana and Galilee, Zebedee's sons, and two other disciples were together. Simon Peter told them, I'm going fishing. They said, we'll go with you. And they set out in a boat. But throughout the night, they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore. But the disciples didn't realize it was Jesus. Jesus called to them, Children, have you caught anything to eat? They answered him, No. He said, Cast your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they did. And there were so many fish that they couldn't haul in the net. Then the disciple, whom Jesus loved, said to Peter, It's the Lord. When Simon Peter heard it was the Lord, he wrapped his coat around him, for he was naked, and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they weren't far from shore, of only about a hundred yards. When they landed... They saw a fire there with fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you've just caught. Simon Peter got up and pulled the net to shore. It was full of large fish, 153 of them. Yet the net hadn't torn, even with so many fish. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples could bring themselves to ask him, Who are you? They knew it was the Lord. 
Jesus came, took the bread, and gave it to them. He did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they finished eating, Jesus asked Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Simon replied, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my lamb. Jesus asked a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Simon replied, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, take care of my sheep. He asked a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was sad that Jesus asked him a third time, do you love me? He replied, Lord, you know everything. You know I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. I assure you that when you were younger, you tied your own belt and walked around wherever you wanted. When you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and another will tie your belt and lead you where you don't want to go. He said this to show the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. After saying this, Jesus said to Peter, follow me. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus. Growing up in a, in a Chicago neighborhood 70 years ago, we had, we had enough kids of fairly similar ages to be able to play uh, street softball all summer long. I'm looking back, I would have been about the, uh, the youngest of our gang, and most would have been about the age of my older brother, Norm five years older than I, but I was included. And thinking back on what I think of as a super childhood, I realize now that the other guys mostly tolerated me, you know, this little kid. I rarely got on base. They kept saying, you know, choke up on the bat. And, and Choking up on the bat just didn't seem very manly, and so I was always holding it at the end and swinging for the fences, and there were no fences, and, uh, and I never learned, you know, but rarely got on base. But I loved the whole, the whole softball thing, and I loved belonging. Loved being, being with the other guys and, and doing things with them. Now, unlike me, this uh, kind of ineffectual uh, athlete, John Smith, and that was really his name, John Smith was one of the guys, uh, older and a natural athlete. John, anything with a ball, a basketball, a football, a baseball, you give it to John, he could do things. And if you got picked to be on his side, whew, you were 90% 90, 90 of the way home to a winning game. But John was, uh, he was not showy or, 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 or braggy. Rather, he was a humble and thoughtful guy. After, you know, we moved out of the old neighborhood and I lost contact with uh, those people. But later I learned that uh, John had, uh, had been a, a star basketball player for the Notre, Notre Dame team. And that when he came towards the graduation time, there were NBA teams that really wanted him. But the priesthood had a prior claim on his life. And so Father John, I don't know much, I don't know anything about his career except for ultimately he became the, uh, the head of uh, Chicago's Maryville Academy, a large 
a Catholic facility that ministered to children. And um, uh, John did, a, I'm sure, a great job. Now, in contrast to Father John, John Smith from the old neighborhood, who did many things well and is widely known and honored in the Chicago metropolitan area among Catholics there and a lot of folks who aren't Catholics, you and I, or, or certainly I, are bench warmers in the game of life. You decide whether that's what you are also. I thought of this, this contrast between the notable and the unknown when reading today's gospel. The author of John tells about Peter. They're up there in Galilee, and, and why they're in Galilee, that's a sermon for a different time. Peter decides he's going to go fishing because that's what he was. He was a fishing guy. And John lists the six disciples who joined him in that venture. There's, uh, there's Nate and Nathaniel. There's um, Thomas, the twin. There's the two Zebedee brothers, uh, James and John. And then two other disciples. That's it. They don't have a name. Two other disciples. And I think, well, that's us. The ones whose names don't get mentioned. In the game of life, we don't show up on the marquee. We're just the guys and the gals who are doing stuff. Now, lest we leave out the women, by the way, in the story of... Um, I point to Luke's account of who was it who showed up that very early morning on the first day of the week at the tomb of Jesus. And Luke uh, lists the women. Now, all four of the gospel writers mention Mary Magdalene. She's the only one that all four mention. And so there's Mary Magdalene, and there's uh, Mary, the mother of James, and somebody named Joanna. And then Luke mentions the other women. Again, um, their names were forgotten. Kind of like you and me, you know? 100 years from now, 50, who knows? Five years from now, some of us will be forgotten. And that's all right. You know, the history of the gospel is, is just full of saints and heroes who are rightly remembered and the others whose humble contributions, while they were needed and sometimes special, never rose to the point of being noticed or acclaimed or published. And so somehow, out of the blue, this last week, I remembered the name of Andre Trakve. May not ring bells immediately for you. Andre Trakme. Sounds like a Frenchman. Well, Pastor Trakme led a small Protestant church in uh, southeast France. Remember, France, fully, fully Catholic. In, in fact, back in the 16th century, they drove out most of these uh, protesting Protestants. But there were still some there. And uh, Pastor Trachme was, uh, was the leader of a small Protestant church in France during the German occupation in the 40s. And together with his wife, Magda, he led an effort in his small town and in the surrounding neighborhood villages to shelter and protect 5,000, that's 5,000 refugees, mostly Jews, 
from capture and death. Not for weeks or months, but for years. During the time of the Nazi death program. Now, the nation of Israel remembers uh, the righteous among the Gentiles. And there are uh, monuments and uh, sometimes trees planted. These are Gentiles who sheltered Jews during that awful time. And uh, Andre and his wife Magda are on that list. Not on the list are the hundreds of humble villagers who fed and clothed and harbored these hunted Jews for that frightful duration. And uh, as I understand the story, I read the book, um, Lest Innocent Blood Be Shed, which nobody has made a movie out of, unlike Schindler's List, which some of you may be familiar with. Nobody in all that time ratted out another, which was often common. There were people all over Europe who were sheltering Jews, and some of them lost their lives because a neighbor who didn't like them, who was jealous of them, or who wanted an extra ham that the Nazis might dole out to uh, squealers. But during all that time, Nobody did. Now, the Trachmes always felt that their actions were nothing special. Indeed, I read, uh, I read uh, Magda's uh, obituary that appeared in the uh, New York Times back in the 90s after she died. And um, she, her family kept reminding people that their parents never thought that what they had done was anything particularly noteworthy, that they were uh, simply doing what human beings would and should do for one another. Now, here's the thing. We'll move on from them to you and me. If, if you come to the end of a day and feel that in that day, you haven't accomplished anything particularly godly. You might be wrong. If someone close by said or did something thoughtless and hurtful, and your response was not anger and recrimination, but quiet, inward forgiveness, that day was a good day, and the angels rejoiced to witness it. I believe it. And if in a day you responded to the crying need of another person in a, a thoughtful and a generous way, and uh, nobody blew a horn or showed up with a TV camera, but that day was a good day in which an unheralded, unpublished follower of the crucified Lord simply did what humans can and must do for one another. We don't, you know, we don't, we don't hear them, we don't see them, but I like to think that on, on such a day, fireworks explode across the dome of the heavens as well as the angels singing, and brass choirs are heard. It's a good day. Now, in today's gospel, after the risen Christ has fed breakfast to the seven disciples, he takes Simon Peter aside because it's time to deal with some unfinished business. Simon, son of John, he asks him, Do you love me? Three times, he keeps repeating the same question. Not calling him Peter. Simon, you noticed. We're not accustomed to hearing Peter addressed as Simon. That's, Peter is the nickname Jesus gave to him, which means rock. 
And Peter was not a rock that night in the courtyard of the high priest when three times he denied that he knew Jesus. Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Feed my lambs, tend my sheep, feed my sheep. The gospel, dear ones, the gospel is about the crucified, risen Jesus declaring and showing his love for us and, and, not to be forgotten, it is about loving him in return and going about the unheralded, because that's probably the way it's going to be, the unheralded work of being rehabilitated sinners, which is what Jesus was doing with, with Peter. He was rehabilitating him. And every time we come here and share in the Holy Supper, every time we come here and it is proclaimed, your sins are forgiven, they really are. We are, we are refurbished and rehabilitated when we come here. We're going about the work of rehabilitated sinners who touch the world and those in it with the love given to us by our saving Lord. Yes, Lord, you know, you know that I love you. Tend my sheep. Amen. The peace of God which passes understanding, keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Amen.
resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, and for all people according to their needs. This day we give thanks for the faiths of the world, for the churches and people that praise God this and every day. Lord, drive us to build relationships in love rather than fear our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our we give thanks for the world in which we live. Thank God for spring flowers and the weather even hail that waters them. Lord, make us caretakers and faithful stewards of your great gift of creation. Lord, in your mercy. We give thanks for our family and friends, as crazy as they may drive us. We pray especially for those we love that are unwell. We pray for Roberta Nielsen, Marsha Wirtland, Mark Schwartzlow, Jody Vandervenet, Don Veach, Ian Ewing, Alan Johnson, Bonnie Sundberg, Neil Taldoxy, Karen Enders, Karen Bandy, Doug Kale, Pastor Jane McChesney, and all those we raise before you now. We pray for those friends and loved ones who are homebound and cannot join us today. Helen Larson, Doris Johnson, Vince Monty, Jane Legrand, Roger Schmidt, Doris Connor, and others. We pray for the family of Bernie Johnson, for the families of all who mourn, who grieve the loss of loved ones. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, there are so many things we don't pray about because we don't know about them. But we know that you know everything. Lord, all of those prayers we don't know, your Holy Spirit brings from us to you. All things, Lord, are within your care. For that we give you thanks, and in that we trust. Lord, in your mercy. Into your gracious hands, Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Share a sign of that peace.
Let us pray. God of all creation, all that you have made is good, and your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts, that we might be for the world signs of your gracious presence. In Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. I want to swing around here. You are all, I want to be used this. We ever understand you are always at hand. Blessed are you coming here. Blessed are you coming here to your church in wine and bread, raised from soil, raised from dead. You are holy. the cosmos praise you Lord sing Hosanna in the highest sing Hosanna Holy God you alone are holy you alone are God the universe declares your praise beyond the stars beneath the sea within each cell with every breath. Generations bless your faithfulness through the water, by night and day, across the wilderness, out of exile, into the future. We give you thanks for your dear son at the heart of human life, near to those who suffer, beside the sinner, among the poor, with us now, in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering his love for us on the way at the table and to the end, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We pray for the gift of your spirit in our gathering, within this meal, among your people, throughout the world. Blessing, praise, and thanks to you, holy God, through Christ Jesus, by your spirit in your church, without end. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Please be seated. Come as the ushers indicate. That's good. Well, I'll, I'll take, we'll take, give that one to uh, Lois over there. All right. Why don't you take the wine, and Jeff will take this, and you guys go back there. of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. Don't worry about it. Body of Christ given for you. 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 given for you. given for you. Body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. I don't think, I think we're done. Hmm? Um, This goes over here. Yeah, that's fine. 
Yeah. Amen. This is the blood of Christ shed in love. Amen. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and the bread of life to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to your Son's resurrection, that we may show your glory to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you, be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.
Christ. Father, is risen and we will arise. Give God the glory. Alleluia. City of God, Easter forever. Golden Jerusalem, does the Lamb, dear river of life, saints and archangels, sing with a nation, God I will am. Jesus is risen and we shall arise, give God the glory, hallelujah. That's, that's great, knocks me out, thank you. If there's anybody who uh, has a, a couple minutes, we got some really bad looking lilies up front that need to have uh, blossoms, uh, the bad ones, taken off. Just help me out a little bit on that. Uh, new people coming and think, what kind of place is this? So let, let's do it. And um, there, is a, there is a gathering downstairs. There's uh, eats and fellowship and the study about um, um, love the Bible but don't worship it. And uh, Chris is leading that. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Morning, brother. Oops, guess I'm on. Always good to see you. Good time. Be on. God love you. Huh?